All right, this is the next part of the uh, kitchen update and putting up the wainscot and backsplashes. And I ordered some of this red oak um, wainscot from uh, Home Depot. And um, it came pretty quick. Um, and I did order extra. And luckily I did. I was trying to match the existing stuff that was in the room. So it looks like it's real close. Um, the, uh, you know, it, it was... Uh, wasn't well, really the best quality, I have to say. There were a lot of color mismatch and a lot of, um, you know, areas that weren't real nice in it stuff. So, luckily I ordered about 50% extra to have some for another area in it. Uh, and look, you can see there's some drying cracks and stuff the way it was, you know, dried. And so they really didn't have that great a quality control on this stuff. Um, and there you can see there was some of it that was really bright red and some that was, you know, fairly matching and some that almost looked like they had mixed in a white oak and you know none of them were perfect um there was some damage and you know collar streaking and stuff like that but you know i had planned on that so i did order extra and um this is a uh, you know pretty much how it looks when you uh, get it just thought i'd share that so um you know, basically, it's just a packaged product. And you can see this piece here is real nice. It was machined properly. And you can see that little chamfer on the left-hand side of it. And then if you look at a lot of the other pieces, you'll see where they actually were off in the machine, it looked like. And they actually have square edges on it and stuff. So, you know, luckily, that's all stuff that's easy for me to fix. Um, so it's not, you pay top dollar, and it's really not a perfect product from what I'm seeing here. So basically it did match the existing um, sizes and stuff and you know, I had to start by sanding it all and I used those little uh, bench cookie things that I had and they worked really good to allow you to go back and um, sand those chamfers on the corner that were missing and stuff like that so it did take a while to, to pick through and pick out the best parts and get enough that I needed and then go back and uh, sand everything and stuff and there's even some wormholes in it if you look it over so then I got a couple different types of stain I had a matchy existing stain and um, I had some water base mixed up at Home Depot that actually turned out to be the closest um, the other one was just oil base that uh, Home Depot said that's what the cabinets come as and then there was another one that didn't even come close so I wound up using the um, the water-based stain, and this actually is my first time ever using that. Um, it's a product that they custom mix your collar at Home Depot, so um, you can get uh, more of a choice of collars in it. And I was a little leery it was going to raise the grain or do something like that, but um, in the end it turned to be really a wonderful product to use. Um, as you can see here, I uh, used a, um, just one of those little dollar store foam brushes. I get them like 10 for a dollar at my dollar store. And I just use them once and throw them away. So um, they do did put the stain on really nice. Um, I put a, just coated the whole piece uh, front and back. And then I just took a, um, a clean lint-free rag and just kind of let it, after it sat for two or three minutes to soak in, just went back and wiped everything down to get the excess off. And it, um, it really did come out good. I'm really amazed. If you, you can see there pretty much how on oak sometimes you can get a big color variation as it sinks in and areas and, you know, the changing of the grain. But this, this water-based stain actually did... Um, do an even job as you can see so I put one coat on both sides and let it dry and then I had to go back and do a second coat to get the color to match you know really it was really close in the end so it did take two coats but the only thing you have to be careful of is uh, those little grooves that they have in these uh, piece of the Wayne's coat um, you have to make sure that you run the brush up and down them so you don't get them real dark and filled with stain so um, there they are, two coats on them, pretty much, you know, all ready to start cutting down to the sizes that I need. I figured I'd stain them first to let that dry, and then, um, it's been 24 hours since they had installed the, uh, granite, and all the 
silicone holding the sink in place and stuff is dry so I went back up and um, just had to do some final work on installing the faucet and you know all the drain plumbing and stuff like that so they did drill the holes and um, you know just they were all in the right spot and they wound up going to Home Depot and buying some new uh, plumbing pipes here to replace the old stuff and I decided on drains I was going to put a little plumber's putty on. Um, they do have a, a rubber seal on there. Um, I don't like the way they look. I've had problems with these in the past leaking. So I just decided I was going to put a little ring around there um, before I inserted these drains. Now one thing you have to worry about with uh, granite is you never want to put plumber's putty on anything that comes in contact with granite because the... Um, oil from it will soak right into the granite and stain it and ruin it so you don't want to use it around the sinks or any of the other things that mount in the granite so I got that you see I put a little plumber's putty around there a little extra just where it meets through the bowl there and uh, just kind of seat it in place and you know I didn't put enough to really make it come up squeezing out or anything so and then there's a big nut and gasket that goes on the bottom of this one and you tighten that up and then there's a nice basket that sort of drops in there just to, you know, catch anything that goes down the drain. Same thing with the other side. Um, this one had a slightly different strainer type basket. But I actually put, see, little plumber's putty around the inside of that too. And kind of set that down in place and squeeze the putty down so it, you know, makes a good seal in there. And then it has a um, different thing that goes on the back. And there's a threaded rod that goes down the middle. And I found that a quarter was the best thing to tighten that up with. I didn't have a screwdriver big enough to go across the gap on it. So a quarter fit right in there and worked good. And then I had to spend some time uh, in the closet cabinet down there under the sink on my back. Uh, getting the uh, faucet installed and the... Um, the soap dispenser installed and um, there's like a feed through for the uh, that pull out sprayer that had to be put in and then I also uh, put all the new drain lines in there so that was a you know half hour on my back just trying to get everything together under there and it all was a fairly easy job just kind of a strange angle and a couple minutes later everything's working um, water's working and when the guys installed the granite they told me whatever you do before you um, wipe the sink down uh, use this the sprayer there to go through and give it a real good wash out because there may be some granite dust from when they drilled those holes up there that uh, could have gotten in the sink and may scrape it so uh, I gave it a quick rinse down with a sprayer there and you know everything was nice and clean then Having those slides sticking in my back didn't really help with the plumbing, but there you can see I kind of ran the plumbing back that extra six inches. I moved everything out and um, to give everything, to give us a little more room in the, under the sink there in the front where the plumbing was. And those, you see those pull-out shelves just, uh, you know, they fit nicely and just cleared all the plumbing and everything. So everything went together real good. Um, no leaks or anything like that. It was, you know, easy using all new materials and all new seals. So I shouldn't have to worry about that. And I got the sinks cleaned out and those nice grates that came with them in the bottom. So that's all put together and ready to go now. So then, um, in the meantime, I had a, another piece of trim I had a, that was taken off. I had to put back on and I had to cut out for the granite how I had extended it. So I took it down on the table saw and kind of hacked it out as you saw there and um, just put it in place up against the edge of the counter there and took a um, took a pencil and just put some masking tape on it and put some scribe marks on there so I could uh, just go in there now and take a file. I had a, well, a little flat file and a little radius file and I just went back and I filed everything down to the line to get a fairly decent fit on that edge where it went around just to finish that off back into the existing wood that was there. So a couple minutes of filing and um, everything came out pretty close. Um, nice tight fit as it went back on and everything so there you can see it's you know it kind of ties all that back together and um, fixes that area up again. 
So, you know, now it's time to start cutting and uh, fitting some of the pieces of the, um, the Wayne's coat. So I just kind of cut all those pieces, those longer strips in half. And then I found some uh, spalted maple that I had left. I'm starting to run short on this stuff, but I did have enough to finish what I wanted here. And uh, there you can see I started cutting the uh, back splashes to fit in there. Um, and the maple does actually look real good with it. So then on the ends, I was trying to figure out, I was originally going to put a radius on there, but then after looking at it, I decided that um, I was going to just take and match the angle of the stove to make everything look like it went together and look a little bit cleaner. So I just set an angle gauge up against that front panel on the stove and it started setting up my angles and pieces and there you can see how it's like a perfect match there and then I went back and I um, used a Craig pocket screw to attach that upright piece of trim to the other one there and everything was kind of radiused over and rabbited out to um, hold the Wayne's coat behind it stuff and then I went back started filling in and cutting the pieces that were stained um, and here you can see for the around the outlets I bought these little plastic extenders so you don't have loose floppy outlets um, and you just loosen this take the screws out and you slip these in behind the outlet and it actually brings it out about the thickness of the Wayne's coat and they do they have them at Home Depot for a couple cents each and they come in all different thicknesses so you know pretty much there it is uh, this is that one corner that I'm working on first everything is kind of loose fit here and um, you know ready to go and so I I put that all together like that and I took it apart and I marked it so I wouldn't get things mixed up and it would go back together right and then I took it all down in the shop and I put three coats of a um, polyurethane on everything to um, to make sure it's all sealed up really good and um, I had painted this way before starting you know getting to this point so um, luckily uh, during you know all the the moving of the cabinets and rework and stuff like that um, luckily there was only one little scratch area in the paint that was caused by uh, trying to squeeze that um, that countertop in the corner there that piece of granite through there and that little front of the um, the sheetrock piece there was kind of bowed out and it just kind of barely nicked it but it did put a little mark in the paint so you know I just had to go back and touch that up and then I had to go look for one one last piece of uh, spalted maple that was long enough and this is kind of my dried wood stack that I have down in my one of them at least that I have down in my shop so I had to start picking through there um a mixture of maple and walnut and you know down there you see a lot of 15 inch wide walnut and ash and stuff like that too and I've got all different thicknesses and sizes and I'm starting to get short on maple so I had to really pick through everything and I didn't find it there and I wound up picking through these piles and um, finally I did locate a piece but there's all my live edge walnut slabs and stuff that are probably been aging for about six seven years now so um, here's a piece of maple that I finally found and it did have some spalt on the end but kind of like I said I'm really getting near the end of um, I have to find another good maple tree that's starting to rot I guess so um, I got that and got that in my shop and started cutting that down a little bit to the piece for the other side and I went back started doing the assembly on this after everything had three good coats of polyurethane on it on all sides too so I went back and I used that um, that Liquid Nails uh, latex based adhesive again. Um, I had good luck using that before and it has like zero smell to it so my wife can tolerate it. So it really um, does make the job easy now that everything's you know all pre-finished and ready to go up. So I just put like a snake shaped bead on the back of each panel and um, just pushed them up against the existing sheetrock wall. Now we had looked at and considered all different types of tiles and even stainless steel tiles and subway tiles and those little tiny ones everybody uses and um, thought we originally had thought about going with the granite on the lower backsplash and stuff but in the end I decided I wanted to um, I wanted to keep a little less modern looking a little bit um, more like a you know kind of a country look to it that matched the rest of the room. Um, 
and it's just one big room so you have to be real careful about incorporating too many different textures and colors in it so um decided this was going to be the the best you know best for the look that we wanted so i know many people put you know tiles up and stuff for backsplash but um in the end this will be just as easy to keep it'll be easier to keep clean than any kind of stainless tile is i know and um it's got good coats of poly on, on it and with the stove pulled forward six inches um there really should be very little splash all the way back there on it so then it was time to um put that final trim piece on the side there and same thing uh, i put glue that same glue on it um this wall had a little bit of a bow in it so there's one there's a, actually a cut three quarters of the way through that bottom piece of maple that you really can't see here but I had to um, put a little slit in there so I could actually bow that maple into place to make it fit really super tight against the wall. So there's a rabbit that you know goes up around all of the wainscot and stuff like that. So it all really is tied together pretty good. So I got that sitting in place, and then I just had to put a um, a board up to uh, between the uh, microwave and the stove there. Just kind of use as a um, platform to or board to put pressure on that out, so I could get a real good tight fit against the wall and hold it there until the clamps dried, until the glue dried. I mean, so I had some of these free clamps that they used to give away at Harbor Freight. I used and they're pretty nice because you can use them as an extension clamp too to put pressure outward. So they kind of held everything in place. And as you can see there, um, well, I'm in the way now, but if you when I move out of the way, see there's a little bit of squeeze out on the wall there to glue, and that's real easy to clean up just, um, you know, with this latex-based stuff, just a damp, a damp piece of paper towel, and it comes right off, and um, you don't even see it. So there's that longer piece that I cut out of that, that uh, piece of lumber I just brought in, and starting to fit that in place, and, you know, get the sizes right, and... Um, I had to put a little little step in there uh, for the support that I wanted under my uh, granite windowsill. And now the same thing, time to start fitting in all the um, all the oak wainscot in there, and um, you know building the uh, building that back piece up and spacing out the outlets and stuff. So pretty much, I got that all ready to go again. And then I took it all down in the shop, like I said, and put three coats of polyurethane on all sides of everything. And um, then a while back, I had bought all new uh, knobs, and I had to wait till I cleaned up and waxed the cabinets to put them on. So getting ready to put them on now while the polyurethane's, you know, going on those other pieces and drying. Um, I got them from Amazon. They're called an Amazon Basics uh, handle. And actually, they matched the ones exactly that I had, um, and they were like a Home Depot type handle. So this did save a little bit of money by going this way. And they did give you like two sets of screws, a long set and a short set for each handle and stuff. And um, you can see they're pretty much identical to the Home Depot handles, but they're um, just like 75 cents less each and these are polished a uh, actually a satin nickel finish instead of the old brass ones that we had and i had to go with these handles because the old ones had left marks on the wood where they were tightened down so there was no way to switch to a different style so luckily i found you know the same handle in a different collar and put them on and you can see all the hardware i had left over when things were done um just really too bad you couldn't buy them without the uh, the screws and save a little more money but in the meantime, all the polyurethane was done and everything was ready to start putting up the, um, you know, the wainscot on this section. So same thing, um, put glue on each one and just kind of went down the line. And, um, you know, as I did before, I numbered everything when I first uh, cut it and put it together just to make sure I wouldn't get things mixed up and everything would go back together perfectly. So pretty much um this is really the simple part of the job when you get to here just a little bit of glue and just stick it in place you have to be careful though this glue doesn't really have good grab so you have to keep pushing until it finally you know quit sliding down but that doesn't take too long 
So I got both sides done there. And um, for the window area, I decided that I'm going to replace the window. So um, that trim and everything will all be replaced later. But I'm not going to do it right now because I'm trying to locate a, um, a window that uh, doesn't have a center section. Right now we've got the dual casements. And I'm trying to figure out how to get an awning window made so we have a clear view out there. Um, in that window, the seal actually blew on the window this winter when we had that real cold snap. So it's really basically um, shot anyway. So that'll be a fall project. So I'm going to you know, have that one area that I'm not going to finish off right now. So there's that last piece of smalted maple going up backsplash. And the same thing, I had to use those clamps. I had to clamp a couple boards onto the uh, edge of the counter and then use them to just hold everything good and tight until it dried in place. Um... Now it's time to put the uh, window sill back in. I didn't have them install the window sill. They just set it in place to make sure it fit when they did the granite countertop. And they told me, whatever you do, be careful with this granite because it does have some um, like fracture lines in it and stuff that you have to be careful of. Um, so make sure that you, you support it good when you pick it up. So I actually clamped some... Uh, plywood onto it before I even attempted to move it out of there when I you know removed it and now it's just a matter I'm I'm just sliding it in here temporarily because as I said before the window is going to be replaced so I don't want to do a permanent glue glue in job yet but they did a wonderful job and it you know actually slid right in as it was supposed to I had to do a little prying just to Everything had settled down when I took it out, I guess. Um, so once I just picked everything back up to where it's supposed to be, it slid right in place. And I, I'm really happy that, you know, I had them make that little piece of windowsill because it is a little extra touch that really does show out. Um, and it'll look better if I can find a window that doesn't have that center strip in it. Um, some type of an awning window, I'm thinking right now. So that pretty much slid in place and there you can see the clamps and the plywood I used just to support it for safety's sake when I was handling it. And now it's just sitting in there on the, um, the shims and that backsplash piece on the front. So that went right back in place. So there it is basically, you know, all the Wayne's coat and everything is glued on and in place now. Um, I still have to leave those clamps sit on for 24 hours till everything is, the glue is really good and dry and so nothing will move later. But, um, you know, basically it was a, uh, it took a little while to do it, but I'm real happy with the look and the way it came out. Um, it'll look a lot better once they get all the red oak around that window trim and stuff to match. But, um, for now, it, you know, it kind of patched in there good. Um, Real happy with the job they did on the countertop and the, the sink. And um, that spalted maple goes, I feel it goes really, really good with the um, the granite that we chose. Um, right there you can see how it looks like the granite goes right up into the spalted maple. The, I got the pattern to match pretty good on the both of them. And um, I thought it was pretty cool. And my wife did get a uh, rest in uh, grease spoon rack there. So... Um, her sister gave her that as a gift for, you know, the new kitchen. So anyhow, this is just kind of, you know, sharing the, the pretty much the last part of it. I still have a little bit of cleaning up and, you know, some. hopefully I can get some final um, good shots of it in the sun with the, um, the proper colors and stuff. And, I mean, you can pretty much see how having uh, all that uh, home cut wood and stuff does come in handy for jobs like this. Um... I wish I had some red oak, but I didn't have the cutters or anything to, to make the actual wainscot to, to match what was there. So, you know, pretty much buying that was the only way to go. And, you know, the cost of that really was not that great. Um, but pretty much it was a, um, you know, a fun little project. And um, I had a couple little helpers throughout the whole project. They are always there willing to give me a hand if I needed it. And i um, really, real happy with the way the um, that maple goes with the granite. They, um, they, it just like brings nature inside, it seems like. Yeah, so the you know, window, you know, I thought and list of things to do. But um, actually, the, that wainscot did really um, 
it does give us a really nice glow out of those lights with the color of the lights that we those LEDs that we picked and um, at nighttime it did knock down the brightness of the lights compared to the glare off the old uh, paint sheetrock so it does give it a really nice warm look at night and um, kind of you know nice you don't even need the big lights on anymore and um, I'm I'm really happy you know the way everything came out and I really like the way this one piece of spalted maple matched right into the uh, the grain on the um, the granite also so pretty much um, you know hopefully next I just do I got a little bit more finishing up to do and um, hopefully I can get some good before and after shots and uh, just put together a quick video about you know how everything came along and what it looked like before and after yeah we do love the new stove and dishwasher they um they really do function good and um work really great um and my wife decided now she's going to collect some mini irises to put on this granite top this little granite window frame here and hopefully they'll match all her big ones uh, which right now just so happens that they all um are in bloom right now and it's a really pretty sight to see thanks for watching please subscribe